Hello and welcome back to Remember the Flowers. We'll be continuing where we left off, which, if you recall, is after Silver and Cyrus had a little conversation about why Silver wants to basically stay glued to Cyrus. <laughs> um, basically, he revealed his whole backstory to him. Well, most of it, I'm assuming. Um, or the more important parts, I guess. And basically, Cyrus agreed, you know, for both his and Silver's sake, you know, because otherwise Silver was still going to be basically uh, Cyrus's shadow, so you might as well just, you know, let him in the room. That's not creepy. Um, yeah, there was also a nice little, you know, dinner, and then there was a party. But yeah, basically, um, I guess cementing Silver and Cyrus's friendship, you know, it's nice, you know, Cyrus will have somebody to you know, have his back, I guess. Yeah. Anywho, so yeah, let's continue and see where that, you know, leads. Chapter 12, The New Norm. The next three weeks go by in an instant. I've more or less settled into my new routine down here. On training days with Kareen, I don't do much else. When I have sessions with Vita, I tend to wander around the base afterwards for hours at a time. The searing gives me just enough energy so that I don't want to just sit around. That is, unless Kanto or Eren need me for something, which hasn't happened too often. Eren sometimes invites me down to the bar when it's slow, and we get to chatting about this and that. He always tries to be sensitive when asking me about my past. It's sweet of him, but I've come to accept things the way that they are. Damien's gone, and I'll never see him nor my friends and family again. You know, because they're dead. That's right, Damien's dead. Talking about them has been very helpful. If nothing else, I can at least keep their memories alive. Because they're dead. Aaron's quickly become a source of comfort for me, but I try not to bother him too much. I know that he's got a tough time being the leader and all. On days where I have nothing planned, Kareen will text me about asking for help on her current projects. Granted, all I can do is try to hand her the correct tools when asked, but it's relaxing at the very least. Kanto's been picking my brain in a weird way. He's had me go to the break room to look at some old technology he found. He wants to figure out how the world's tech worked, I guess just as a hobby. Straying away from the routine, one of the bigger variables is whether or not I wake up alone in the room. True to his word, Silver hasn't been obtrusive in any way. Some mornings, we'll talk for a bit before he has to go off to do something illegal. Other days, I won't see him until right before I fall asleep. Since most of my obligations are later in the day, I don't mind staying up longer to chat with him. A lot of stories he's told me recently have been pretty tame. No murders, as far as I'm aware of. Just some petty pickpocking or detective work for pay. It's been pretty peaceful, all things considered. When the worst thing that I have to worry about is figuring out which meal I'm in the mood for, I'd say I'm doing pretty good nowadays. Although, while I'm enjoying myself lately, thoughts bubble up in the back of my mind of my former life. It usually happens when I'm asleep. Most of them are fragments but I can't help but feel slightly melancholic when I wake up. Silver's been a big help with that, too. He can usually tell when I've had one of those dreams and asks me what it was about. However, the one that I had last night seemed to have piqued his interest more than usual. So, when you were young, your parents helped you bury something called a time capsule? What is that? Why'd you do it? Silver's been very curious about my life before the fall, so much so that he'll ask pretty much anything. I sit myself up on the bed so that we can have a proper talk. It was for a school project. I think it was in the fifth grade. We were told to come up with a letter for our future selves and bury it, along with various items. That seems weird. What was the point? All I can do is shrug. Beats me. Probably a cute excuse to see how much we've grown. I don't even remember what I buried. 
Silver looks over at his pile of belongings. I kind of want to try it. How come? Ash didn't get to do a lot of normal things like that growing up. It could be fun. He's 20, right? Not trying to dampen the mood, but he might be a little old to get excited over something like that. Maybe you're right. Still, hearing about everything you did growing up has been interesting. I can't imagine going to school every day like that. Trust me, those were some of the easier times of my life. I suddenly think about my bad test scores in grade school. On second thought, maybe not. Elementary school was tough. It still boggles my mind how commonplace school was back then. Have you thought about trying it nowadays? Not really. I think I'm too far gone for something like that. Don't say that. I think you're plenty capable. That's sweet of you, Cyrus. But I doubt they want to see applicants tracking blood everywhere they go. Although... Yeah? Maybe I can help Ash get into college or something? Silver looks deep in thought. I've only known him for about a month at this point, but it's clear how devoted he is to his brother. Almost to a self-sacrificing degree. Do you need prior education to apply for college here? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure you just take an entrance exam and hope for the best. You know, after paying a small fortune. Guess some things never change. Maybe one day I'll go back to school. Need to update my credentials to fit the modern day. Lofty goals. I'm sure you could do it, considering your background. You say that, but I'm sure science and medicine have evolved to lengths that I couldn't even dream of. Guess you better steady up then. Heh, <laughs> maybe I will. I rest my chin on my hand and face the wall for a moment. Uh-oh, someone's thinking about something. Yeah, being easy to read is one of my many weaknesses. It's not always a bad thing. What are you thinking about? Well, well, it's hazy. I'm still thinking about the time capsule I buried. I wonder if it's still there. Oh? Do you want to try to dig it up? Maybe. I'm not sure. It's weird to say, but I've been oddly homesick lately. It's probably not still there. Maybe it's just for a lack of closure, but I would like to see my old house one more time. What about you? Do you want to take a trip up there? What? Uh, to your old house? Yeah. I'll have to get back to you on that. While I'm technically on vacation, there's still some work that I gotta do. Part-time assassination? Among other things, yes. Silver effortlessly balances a knife on the tip of one of his claws. I bet Aaron would love to go, though. You know how obsessed he is with learning how the world used to be. Sounds like someone else I know. Hey, come on. I'm interested, not obsessed like he is. Silver gets up from the bed and then grabs a jacket. I think it's something worth asking about if you want to try. Besides the Energen, you haven't been going out too much. Speaking of, do you need to go today? Nope, Kareen says I'm making good progress. I try to flex my arms despite how lanky they still are. They're leagues better than when I first started. The treatments with Vita have been going well, too. For the first time in a long while, I feel like I've got some energy back. I can tell. You seem just a bit happier as of late. Does that mean I'm off suicide watch? That's up to Titania. Unless you want me to leave, that is. Nope. I haven't had a roommate that I actually liked in, well, centuries. Oh, shut up. Come on, let's go see Eren. Right now? Yes, right now. If you want to take an extended leave with him, he'll need to request it ASAP. And we can't just text him about it? Should I take it that you don't want to see him, then? Mm. What? No, that, that's not... Uh -huh. Hang on, let me get dressed real quick. Attaboy. The current time at Lampin Peak is a little after 7 o'clock. 
Although we're so high up that you think it's new, I've since learned Aaron lives in what I knew as Alaska. Living in the southern part of the old state means that there is some semblance of night, but it doesn't last very long. Is Aaron expecting us? It's okay, I have a key to his place. That's not what I asked. My axiom beeps. I expect it to be a message from Aaron, but it's from Kanto. Hey, are you hogging silver to yourself already? Ugh. Silver, your boyfriend's getting jealous again. Jeez, sorry about that. Have y'all been getting along, right? He didn't take you moving in with me too well. He'll get over it. Come on, let's go. I'm no relationship expert by any means, but Silver's been avoiding Kanto as of late, even if he doesn't want to admit it. Do you want to talk about it? Not really. I just need some space, I think. After we talk to Aaron, we can have lunch at Ash's Cafe. How's that sound? Uh, good. I like the food there. Me too. He's so quick to shutting things down. There's definitely been some friction between the two of them. Even I can tell that much. I just try to be supportive when I can. It's all I can do. Alright, this will just take a minute. What are you? Silver leans down next to Aaron's door and then starts trying to pick the lock. I thought you said you had a key. I do. I'm using it right now. Now pipe down. I need to concentrate. Doesn't he have a security system that Ring made? What if you trip it? Oh, please. Ring hasn't made a single lock that I haven't been able to pick. There's an audible click. See? And you doubted me. I wasn't so hard. Christ. The lights are off in the living room, but flick on as we walk inside. Are you sure he's awake? What if he's asleep? Then we just wait for him to wake up. Do you want a drink? I mean, kinda, but I don't want to steal one from Aaron. Why not? I thought you said that you were pretty comfortable around him. Oh, so you want to talk about relationship statuses? That's not... Hello? I nearly bite my tongue as I hear a familiar voice coming down the stairs. Aaron spots us almost immediately. And he's wearing nothing but a couple of towels. I feel my face get a little warm, so I try to naturally look away. I can see a shit-eating grin on Silvers' face as I do so. Oh, uh, hey guys, what are you doing in my house? Condo. Aaron sighs. You know, I'm not exactly a morning person. What's going on? Well, Cyrus here was telling me how much he missed you. I use my menial training with Kareen and sock Silver in the arm. Ow, what was that for? Anyway, Silver wanted to come and talk to you about something. I wanted to text you about it, but he insisted that we come and see you in person. Um, I see. This early? Wait, hang on, let me get dressed. I'll be back in a few minutes. Oh no, you hear that, Cyrus? Aaron's leaving. Shut up, don't make me punch you again. Telling this fox I might have feelings for Aaron was one of the worst things that I've ever done. After getting ready, Aaron offered to pay for a meal down at the cafe Ash works at. I didn't realize it was only a couple of blocks away from the Starlight Road. Once we get settled into a booth, Silver lets the cat out of the bag without hesitation. You want to take a trip? Aaron asks with a bit of surprise in his voice. I pinch the bridge of my nose out of embarrassment. I mean, yes, but I didn't want to just jump right into it. You gotta know when you gotta go for the kill if you want to make it around here. That's not advice you want to give to somebody who is currently mad at you. Aaron chuckles at our petty dispute. Well, I don't think it's that bad of an idea. Where did you want to go? I instinctively look at Silver, making sure that he doesn't try to ruin this for me. I can see a giant smirk he's wearing behind the cup of black coffee he's drinking. I wanted to see if you could take me to where I used to live. It's on the other side of the country, though. Aaron sips his mug of hot chocolate with wide eyes. 
Like, uh, where you grew up? Yeah, I wanted to see if anything was still there. These past few weeks, I've been trying to find closure. I think actually being there might be helpful. Hmm... I don't see why not. Whereabouts did you grow up anyway? What was it? Uh, Velmont? Vermont, somewhere in the northeast. Ah, right. That is pretty far. But distance isn't the biggest issue. I'm just worried if anything is still... uh... there. Was there a big impact around the northeast? Kinda. Silver pulls out the axiom on his left wrist, showing a map with lots of circles of various sizes. The east got hit pretty hard. The western part of, uh, what was it? The US? The United States, yes. Right, the west was relatively unscathed, particularly the southern parts. That's convenient for current, they probably capitalized on the fall relatively easily. So the story goes. In any case, it wouldn't hurt to go and have a look. What part of the map was Vermont? Right, uh, here. I point to where it approximately was. There's no state lines on this map. Hmm. The nearest impact was about 100 miles away. It's possible that there's something still there. Although, there hasn't been anything built around there yet. I'd say it's worth a shot. You know, I'm sure we could make a profit out there too. What? How? Since it's not habitable, there aren't a lot of people who have been over there in years. I bet that there's tons of Lodestar there. That's wishful thinking, but maybe. It wouldn't hurt to look. I can submit a job application for us to go looking around there. Sightseeing can be written off as just a side perk. I'm not sure that they'd fall for that. Besides, I have loads of vacation time. Lame. That would have been fun to try and pull off. Do you think I need any sort of permission? Probably. I'll try to get into contact with the boss personally about it. You're just asking to get shut down. She wants Cyrus to have freedom, Talon. I'm sure she'd understand. Yeah, yeah. Order number 42. Oh, hey guys. I can hear the sound of a cart full of food being pushed from behind me. Turning in my head, I see Ash in his work uniform. Barring the gray fur, he really does look like he's related to Silver. We've only met a few times, but he's always been polite, if a little meek. Hey there, champ. How's it going today? Pretty steady. Can't complain too much. Last night was rough. Had to close almost at midnight because of some drunks trying to haggle with me about their tab. Oh yeah? Give me some descriptions. For research purposes. It's not that big of a deal. So, uh, tell them. They left after I showed them the gun you gave me. I can handle some things on my own, you know. Aaron chuckles. That's good to hear. Still, you let me know if someone causes trouble for you, alright? I'm happy to pour down here. I'll keep that in mind for next time. I let people drink after last call. Anyway, here's your food. Ash sets the plates in front of us one by one. I couldn't decide what to get, so I let Aaron choose for me. Looks like a club sandwich and a small cup of soup on the side. I'm glad soup and sandwich combos survived the apocalypse. Silver got a salad with chopped meat on it, while Aaron got himself what looks like fish and chips. It looks amazing as always. Do you want to sit down with us? I wish, but I have some other customers to take care of. If you need anything, just yell for me. Will do. We'll swing by later. We might be going on a trip. A work trip? Uh, yeah, a work trip. I see. Be careful. I will. Don't worry. With a bow, the small gray fox walks to another end of the cafe. He's a good kid. I take it he knows what you do? Not the fine details, but uh, yes. He's somewhat aware. I think he's proud of you, Talon. That's what I should be saying. I don't know how he handles working here. I can't put up with these idiots. Don't worry, it just takes practice. I sip my tea before starting to dig into the food. 
Aaron taps away on his axiom for a little while before doing the same. I sent in the request for time off. Should get a response in the next day or so. Gives us some time to set up a route. It's been a while since I've had a nice haul. I'll see if Rose will let us borrow one of her bikes. You still have yours, right? Sure do. Although, it could use a little tune-up. After we finish up, I'll head over to ask her about it. We're not taking the in-vehicle? There shouldn't be a need. It's so remote, I doubt even Resume has set up any posts out there. Fair enough. I've never ridden on a motorcycle before. We'll get a sidecar for you, if need be. I don't know. Maybe he should learn how to ride one. He could use a means of transportation for himself. That's not a bad idea. I'm sure that we can easily forge a license for him. Am I even considered a citizen around here? I was going to ask. No one will care. You do make a good point, though. I'll ask if we can whip up an ID for you, too. Bet you could still get drinks without issue. Not like anyone would card you. Being over 300 years old has its perks, after all. The rest of our mealtime shifts into talk about what benefits and disadvantages I have being so old. Before I know it, a good hour passes by. I'm going to go pay. I have to go to work later this afternoon. I'll let you know if they approve the time off. Yeah, I should probably get things started for the trip as well. What about you, Cyrus? I was thinking of paying Vita a visit. I wanted to see if I should do anything in particular since we'll be away for a long time. Sounds like we all got a plan. Alright, let's get out of here. Good idea. It's starting to get busy. Hope Ash will be fine. I'm sure he will be. He's more than capable than you know. I know, I know. <laughs> Cute. Meanwhile, in the upper floor of a hospital in Tunisia. A hippo wearing a doctor's coat is examining his newest patient. You seem to be healing up well. Your eyes should be as good as new. Hmm. I guess as a wolf, you have some pride to protect. Isn't that right, Mr. Prager? Say what you want. I don't have a lot to be prideful of. You were in a sorry state when you got here, so I'm not surprised. The hippo starts to laugh as if he wasn't insulting me. I want to punch him in the face. Please don't antagonize him too much, doctor. He's already taking a beating, as you're aware. I glare at the weasel on the other side of the room, but I hold my tongue. I'm in too deep to try and start shit with him. Yes, yes, I do apologize. Let's just get these bandages off. I bat the hippo's hand away. I can do it myself. My word! Ahem. I'll take over from here, doctor. I'll have the payment sent over this afternoon. Well, if you insist, please give the lovely folks over at Resume my regards. We'll always be of service to our most generous patrons. Considering you mended a smashed snout and a broken eye socket in a matter of weeks, you better believe I'll put in a good word. Anything for your cause, sir? Well then, I'll be off. Let one of the nurses know if you need anything else. Will do, sir. Thank you. The weasel already loses interest with the doctor, staring in my direction again. The hippo doesn't seem to notice as he starts humming to himself on his way out. Once it's just the two of us, it's silent. I try not to talk to him if I don't have to. How are you feeling? I get off the hospital bed I was sitting on and then make my way to a nearby sink and mirror. Using my claws, I snip away the bandages. It takes a moment for me to be able to focus with my bad eye, but once I do, I can't help but notice how clean it looks. As if I was never hurt to begin with. I guess that's what a rich hospital gets you. I can see Artemis move behind me in the reflection with a serious look on his face. Honestly. I thought after everything you'd be willing to open up at least a little bit. Guess your info isn't as good as you thought. Oh, I'm so glad you brought that up. I wanted to ask you a few questions. As far as I'm aware, we're done here. Is that right? After thinking about it, I decided that I don't want to work for you anymore. 
Artemis starts staring at me in the reflection. Don't you think that after selling us multiple people you found on the street, you're a little too far gone? Want me to open your file? Oh, believe me, it's quite interesting. But it wasn't until we met last month that I realized something about you that is positively damning. Now more than ever, I wish I had my rifle with me. And what might that be? Artemis walks up closer behind me, enough to get near my ear. Why didn't you tell us you worked for them? He's still staring at my reflection. I'm trying my best to not look scared shitless. What do you mean? My life has nothing to do with you. You've been withholding critical information from us, Lance Krager. You didn't really think that we wouldn't find out about who you used to work for, did you? Not only that, but after doing a little digging, I can see that you lied to us when you sought us out years ago. Fuck my life. Artemis lets out an unsettling chuckle. Now, I'm not one to get my hands dirty if I don't have to. As you're probably aware of, it takes ages to wash blood out of fur. I squeeze my fist so hard my claws easily puncture my skin. I can feel warm blood drip onto the floor below. Artemis looks down with a coy look on his face. Now, Mr. Krager, I'm a fair man. We got you the best in terms of public medical treatment. However, now that it comes to my attention that you weren't being fair with us, can you stop beating around the bush? Just what the hell do you want? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. I'll make things simple for you. I have since learned that you never got a proper education as well. I want to kill. If you want to leave this room alive, you're going to come work for us and tell us everything you know. Simple terms, right? Oh, how I love it when tough guys try to act all defiant. If it's any consolation, I'm sure you'll do well as a soldier for us. The weasel pokes my forearm before he squeezes it. Despite how small in stature he is, I can't help but wince. Then again, that's entirely up to you, of course. Now, what will it be, Lance Krager? I close my eyes just so that I don't have to look at a smug piece of shit for just a second. It crossed my mind to sell information about Aaron and the others many times. But, despite everything that's happened, I couldn't. Maybe it's naivete, but every day I'm waiting for an apology letter to come through my axiom. It's been years. How weak am I? How stupid am I? I take a deep breath before answering a simple yes or no question. Fine. Oh, wonderful. I knew we'd see eye to eye. However, just in case. With a swift movement, the weasel fastens something around my neck. I don't have time to register what it is before it starts to tighten. I can hear a beep coming from it. What the fuck? Oh, never seen one before? It's called an Arcadia Collar. It's to make sure that you know your place in the world. You'll always be under our caring eye. As long as you're employed with us, shake on it. Artemis grabs my bleeding palm and starts to shake it, giving it a healthy squeeze that causes me to cringe in pain. Dear me, when did that happen? We might have to extend your stay after all. Let me go fetch the doctor. I'll be back in a jiffy. With one final squeeze, the weasel makes his way out of my hospital room. It's quiet. The only sound that I can hear is my blood dripping to the floor, making a mess. I tug on the black metal collar around my neck. I can feel it sinking into my skin. How fitting. The next day. 
Aaron got back to me last night saying that the request for leave was approved. It looks like it'll just be myself, Aaron, and Silver will leave in the next few days. Silver is actually going to be working. Apparently, there's rumors of a facility being built around that region. He's going to do some reconnaissance on it. He's still complaining about it on our way to visit Kareen. Man, I should have known that they were going to find a way to make me work. Didn't you want to go scavenging for lodestars on a company time? Yeah, but they wouldn't have to know that. I'm sure it'll be fine. For all we know, there won't be anything current related out there. You keep saying current. What is that? Oh, uh, resume. Force a habit, sorry. Ah, don't worry about it. Silver makes his way to the inner gym and takes off his hood. I do the same as we wave to Kareen. Kareen spots us from the other side of the room, waving excitedly. Hey guys, what's the occasion? You're not due to train until tomorrow, Sai. Uh, about that. We give Kareen a quick rundown of the situation at hand. What? Why wasn't I involved? Because knowing you, you're already blown out all your vacation time. That's not true. I have at least five hours left. She exclaims with genuine enthusiasm. I rest my case. To be fair, it was a spur-of-the-moment decision. I think we'll only be gone for a week at most. Not much of a vacation. You're gonna need a ride, right? That's actually why we're here. We wanted to see if we could borrow a bike for Axel and Cyrus. Plus, I need a tune-up on my own. I think I have something in storage that'll work for that. Sidecar and everything? Along with some helmets, the kind Ring's been working on. Just three, yeah? He's given most of them out, but I should have enough. My eyes start to wander around the gym as they have their conversation. I wonder what kind of rehab I can do while I'm gone. Uh, hey Rose, will this impact my therapy at all? Hmm, not particularly. You've been making great strides since we started. Just make sure to take breaks while on the road to stretch. You'll be just fine. Got it. Sounds good. Speaking of, did you teach him how to punch? Hell yeah, I did. Cyrus wanted to learn some basic self-defense. Why? What happened? Oh, I was just teasing Cyrus about er- And just like yesterday, I drive my fist squarely into Silver's arm. Ow. Kareen whistles, satisfied. Dang, Cy. Your form could use some work, but you've definitely nailed the basics. I stretch my fingers out. Thankfully, I've had plenty of opportunities to practice. I have been called a great teacher. By who? Anyway. Uh-huh. Regardless, thanks for the help, Rose. I appreciate it. Don't mention it. Just make sure you enjoy yourself, yeah? I'll certainly do my best. I'd love to stick around, but I gotta go talk with Vita too. Oh yeah? I think it's a day off. What do you need? Same thing I asked you. What should I do while gone and all that jazz? We'll find them. They never leave the base. They're probably in their garden. I tried texting them on my Axiom, but they haven't responded, which doesn't help. Yeah, good luck getting a reply out of them. I've been trying for weeks, and I'll be lucky if I get back a simple okay. They never got accustomed to using their Axiom. They're pretty old-fashioned. What does that make me? Older fashion! The hyena starts to laugh at my poor excuse of a joke. I don't have the heart to tell her how dumb it is, though. Instead, I just try to force a laugh. Anyway, that's most of our prep work done for the trip. I still have some supplies to go shopping for. I'll probably be back late at night. Want me to save you some dinner? Sure, if you want. Don't wait up for me. You'll need your rest. Yeah, yeah. If you do find Vita, let them know that I want to see them. I've got some mechanic questions that I want to ask them. I'll do my best to remember that. Let me know if y'all need anything else. You got it. I'll probably see you again right before you leave. Take care. You as well, and I'll see you later, Talon. That you will. I'll try to pick up some stuff for you while I'm out. My treat. Oh? Yay? Don't worry. Nothing you can't handle. Right...
I've been walking through the halls of the base for almost 30 minutes. It's not like I've gotten lost or anything. I can retrace my steps. I knocked on Vita's office door a few times, but there wasn't a response. I assume that they're in their garden, like Silver said. The only problem is that I have no clue where that is. They never gave me a tour of the whole facility. Well, I can find what I know easily, finding somewhere I've never been to is tough. Is it like a literal garden all the way down here? How the hell does that work? I started getting winded from walking around for so long and then lean against a nearby wall. I knew this place was huge, but this is ridiculous. Oh, hey, look, it's the ghost of Razum. I look behind me as two somewhat familiar faces turn a corner. Oscar, stop, don't be rude. How come? He's super cool, like a real life storybook character. That's a bit of an oxymoron you got there. The rabbit and husky I met last month walk up to me. I try my best to straighten my posture and look presentable. Hello again, I hope you're doing well. Besides all the assignments we've been getting, can't really complain too, too much. We just got back from a hefty one. Thankfully, we have a couple of days to relax before setting out again. I see. Must be rough out there. Hope you're not working yourself too hard. Eh, it's whatever. It pays well and seems to be for a good cause. We're trying to stop a nationwide conglomerate from taking advantage of people's goodwill and ignorance. Not to mention the whole raising an army of pumped-up super soldiers thing. Oh yeah, I forgot about that part. Honestly... <laughs> well, I'm sure you're both doing a good job. Really? You mean it? Oscar got excited and a little too close to my face for my liking. Still, I try to be polite. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You're a leader, after all. The hair started tugging on the husky's ear. And because of that, he should show a little bit more respect. Ow, ow! Hey, if anyone's got respect here, it's me. Cyrus is literally a huge inspiration. I wouldn't go that far. Besides being a damsel in distress, I haven't really done anything. Don't say that. Saving lives and screwing over Resume is what we're meant to do. You're living proof that what we're doing is worth it. Oscar's tail is wagging frantically. Despite how overzealous I personally think he's being, I can tell he's sincere. Uh, that's kind of you to say. I'm sorry, I'm not really used to being gushed over. You'll have to forgive him. He gets excited easily. But I agree with what he's saying. You have become somewhat of a beacon of hope around here. Well, I'll try to do what I can. Don't force yourself. As long as you're alive and well, I'd say that we did a pretty good job. Even Stan was singing your praises. After we first met, he went on and on about how impressive you are. Oscar crosses his arms and closes his eyes in thought. We've seen our fair share of casualties, both in and out of Resume. Despite being one of the very first they took, you're doing the best out of any of them. I instinctively hold my hand over my chest, above my heart. Uh, I'd say that's more luck than skill on my part. Give yourself some credit. Luck or not, you're still here. That's all that matters in the end. I agree. Still, you gotta tell me about all your experiences. I'd love to hear. Uh, ahem. Uh, I mean, if you're comfortable with it, that is... <laughs> you're fine, Oscar. I've gotten pretty good at telling people as of late. Maybe I should hold a seminar. Oh, -ho! we have a conference hall you could use. Uh, maybe some other time. I'll be the first one in line. Oscar, not to rain on your parade, but we are supposed to be meeting up with Stan right now. Oh, crap, you're right. Uh, hey, if it's all right with you, can I add you to my axiom? I promise not to spam you or anything. Uh, sure, I don't see why not. Awesome! The husky excitedly starts to send me his contact information. I'll make sure that he doesn't go overboard. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fine. Heck yeah! If there's anything you need, Cyrus, please just let us know. Always happy to help. I appreciate it. Actually, now that you mention it, I do need some directions.
After getting an apt enough description, I think I finally made my way to Vita's garden. I tug on my color. It's definitely much more warm and humid over here. There's one door that's already wide open. I poke my head in to see what kind of garden could survive underground. This room has an above-average ceiling with several light fixtures. There are rows of plants of all kinds neatly organized throughout the space. It doesn't take me long to spot Vita. They're caring for a pair of orchids. When they see me, they look surprised and set down a watering can. Oh, good evening, Cyrus Cantwell. Afternoon, Vita. Is this where you've been all day? Yes. Is that an issue? No, uh, but I was trying to get a hold of you. Vita holds her axiom-less arm up. I left that gadget in my office. It's my day off, so I wasn't expecting to need it. I exhale with mild frustration. I guess that's fair. I used to turn my cell phone off for similar reasons. Your what? Uh, never mind. I actually came because I had some questions to ask regarding my treatment. You're making good progress. There's nothing that you should need to question. That's great to hear and all, but I'm going on a trip soon. It'll be a little while before our next session. Vita looks confused. What do you mean, a trip? I mean... A, a trip? Aaron and Silver and I are going to go across the country for a little while. I wanted to know if there was anything that I should do while I'm gone. Hmm... I see. Let me think about it. When are you leaving? In the next few days. I might have something that could help. I've been tinkering with a device that should help you with your ports, along with carrying a mobile supply of fluids. Really? That would be perfect. But why would you want to go so far away? Vita sounds just the tiniest bit anxious. It's a little silly. Something sentimental. I guess you could say. That sounds even more ridiculous. Maybe so, but I think it'd be worth it. I'm talking about you leaving. I know it's for your rehabilitation, but even just going to the hyena's gym is highly illogical. We've always done physical therapy down below. I know that you're a bit of a special case, but this just adds to the nonsense. Vita's almost rambling. It's so out of left field that I don't really know how to respond right away. Maybe I shouldn't mention where else I've gone? Even to make a point? Uh huh. Do you, like, need to get something off your chest? I thought you were smarter than this, Cyrus Cantwell. Again, that sounds like a personal problem. Is it even worth it? Aren't you scared? Not really? Why? What's got you so spooked? Should I be scared? What if they find you while you're out there? What will you do? Who? Current? Yes, or whatever else you want to call it. If they find you, you're as good as dead. You know, I think I've cheated death long enough. This is not a joking matter, Cyrus Cantwell. For the first time since I've known them, the doctor starts getting huffy. I had no idea this was such a sore spot for them. I give them a moment to compose themselves before opening my mouth again. Uh, Vita, when was the last time you left the base? I haven't. What? I haven't left since I was brought here, and I'm going to keep it that way. I see. That's your prerogative, and I'm not going to judge you on it. I don't want your pity, Cyrus Cantwell. I want you to realize the situation you've wound up in. You're being very careless. I'm well aware of how often you move around by yourself. It would be child's play for them to abduct you. Okay. And have they? Look, I'm not trying to belittle you or your history with Current. I'm sure that there are things that you'll never want to tell someone else. Uh, but after being in there for three centuries myself, most of which is in some sort of confinement, I think I'll risk taking a walk by myself every once in a while. Y 
you are right. I apologize. It wasn't right of me to try to dictate your actions. You can say that again. I'm pretty sure that we've both had enough of people doing that to us. Indeed. Again, I am sorry. There's nothing to worry about. Apology accepted. Vita stay silent for a little while, before picking up their watering can. If you have some time, I'd appreciate some help taking care of the plants. Once they have been sufficiently cared for, we can work on that upgrade. I don't mind. It's been a while, but I used to help take care of plants all the time. Really? Then things should go even faster. Vita directs me to a nearby table with several pieces of gardening equipment strewn about. I'm surprised something like this is even possible. I never thought plants could survive all the way down here. It's a relatively new advancement, with how desolate much of the land is. They had to improvise. Huh. As I make my rounds with a watering can of my own, something catches my attention. All the plants are labeled. While I can recognize most of them at a glance, the labels are names that I've never heard of. There's a pot of daffodils labeled Sunbells. Despite that, some of the names stay the same. There's a small bush of roses correctly named. I'm going to need to find a modern book on flowers. A lot of the names are tripping me up. I'm sure that you'll get used to it. Just use your instincts. Right. We carry on in silence for most of the time we work. Every now and then I ask Vita some questions about themselves, just to break up the monotony. Apparently, Titania funds this garden herself as a thank you for Vita's services. Not a bad deal. They really haven't left this place in years, huh? I can't imagine living like that. Something did resonate with me after dwelling on it. I do need to be a little cautious while we're traveling. Normally, I don't work unless scheduled. However, I'm willing to call it even as thanks for helping me in the garden. Thank you. I appreciate it. What did you come up with anyway? Vita heads to their desk, opens a drawer, and then takes out something wrapped in cloth. I haven't had it fitted yet, but from the measurements I took when we first met, it should suffice, at least until you return. They unwrap the cloth, revealing some kind of metal... Uh, thing. I'm not sure what I'm looking at. It looks like a thin and oval metal strip. There are three indents spaced evenly throughout. It looks like it's segmented in order to be flexible, too. This is what I've been working on. Not only will it provide your back with protection, but it should make it much more efficient to administer serum. You made this yourself? Amongst other things, yes. They point to their jaw replacement. Uh, wait, they made it themselves? Wow, that's really impressive. You flatter me. I assure you, it's engineering at its most fundamental level. You say that, but I'm not so sure. In any case, take off your clothes, please. I'll show you how to do the maintenance on it. Without delay, I start to pull my shirt and jacket over my head. Hold still while I apply it. Once again, I do as I'm told. It almost feels like an octopus being suctioned onto my back. It makes me squirm ever so slightly. They make sure it's properly fastened into the, my ports, pushing into each of the indents as if they were buttons. This might take the cake for the least comfortable thing I've ever done. Thank you for your insight, Cyrus Cantwell. I'll be sure to take that into consideration for the next model. You are oh so very welcome, Doctor. Be sure to cite me properly. Vita continues to make sure that everything is in place for the next few minutes. All right, that should do it. Vita walks back to their desk for a moment before they hand me some vials. This is still an enormous amount of work in progress, but every few days you should try to have Aaron insert these into your back. All he needs to do is open them and put them in the proper ports. So basically the same schedule as before, just smaller doses? Yes, the serum is much more compact and should boost your recovery by a significant amount. It wasn't meant to be used as a portable option, but I suppose that you can do it on the go. 
Is there a way to do it myself at some point? You could try taking it orally. It's not as effective, but I have seen some decent results. I see. That's good to know. Thank you. It's no trouble. I appreciate the help earlier. Could I come back to your garden and help again? Vita's face softens up as much as her face can. I wouldn't be opposed. It's always nice having another capable set of hands. I'll certainly do my best anyway. I take out my axiom to look at the time. It's a little after five. I should probably head back. I've got some prep work for the trip. Let me know when you're about to leave. I'll make some more supplies for you. Good thing I've already offered to help out, yeah? No. This one's on me, Cyrus Cantwell. On one condition. You come back safe and alive. I'll make sure of it. Don't you worry. Hmm. No, no. I have a set of clothes along with various supplies laid out on my bed. Trying to figure out what I should bring has been a small challenge. Even back in the day, I didn't go on many trips, let alone cross-country. Oh shit, I don't even have a suitcase or anything. As I try to text Aaron for help, I hear the door open behind me. Silver walks in carrying a few bags of his own, and then places them in its corner. Welcome back. Thanks. What are you doing? Attempting to prepare, but I'm not sure what to bring. Do you know where I can get a suitcase? Uh, probably in town. Why? We're going to be away for at least a week. I'll need one to carry everything. Just use your axiom. That's what I do. Did you forget? So, what did you end up buying? Smooth as ever, ain't ya? Nothing special. Just some rounds of ammunition and more camping equipment. Silver pulls out the axiom on his right wrist. We're going to port to the station nearest to your house. It's a lot farther than we thought, so we'll probably still drive for at least a day before getting there. He grabs one of his bags, turning it over and pouring the contents on the floor. I recognize most of it as standard camping equipment. Lighters, a sleeping bag, canteens. There are some tools that I can't entirely make out. Aaron should have everything else covered. All we gotta do now is wait. Woo. Curb your enthusiasm. You'll wake up the whole base. Sorry, I am excited. But... Well... I had a talk with Vita earlier. At the time I was pretty confident, but now I'm starting to get a little worried. What if Current finds us? They won't. Your old house is so far away from any semblance of civilization. They aren't annoying enough to make an outpost out there. What about on the way there? To town. Then we'll make a getaway and or kill them. You don't think that this is our first time dealing with them, do you? Of course not, but do you want to stay here? I... I don't know. Hmm. Silver steps away from his pile of supplies and then moves over to my bed, looking over everything. If you don't want to go, I doubt that you'd go through all of this trouble. Cyrus, we're all scared, or at the very least cautious. Every time we ever step foot out of the base, we're aware of the danger that could be waiting for us. Silver lets out an exhale. Honestly, I kind of want to have a chat with Vita for putting those thoughts in your head. But at the end of the day, it's a reality that you needed to be aware of. Silver puts his arm around my tense shoulders. We're not going to let them take you away. Hell, the higher-ups wouldn't have approved this if they didn't think that we were capable of protecting you. I know, I trust you. I just... I hate feeling so weak and powerless. I thought that I had gotten used to it for a while I had. But now...
I have something to lose again, and I'm scared of it being taken away. Silver pauses before leaning into my field of vision, making sure that I'm looking him in the eye. Look at me, Cyrus. I will die before I let them take you again. I'm damn well sure Aaron will put himself in the way before I even have a chance. He squeezes my shoulder, trying to reassure me. You're in good hands, Cyrus. I promise. I take a shaky breath before shaking my head. <sighs> You're right. Sorry. I shouldn't let myself get spooked like that. On the contrary, I'm glad you're thinking pragmatically. But it's up to you to decide what you can and can't handle. I'm pretty sure that you can handle a cross-country drive, right? Yeah, I'm sure. But... Uh-oh, another but already. Can you, like, teach me to defend myself? Silver blinks and looks up in thought. I'm sure I could teach you a thing or two. Is that why you've been doing self-defense training with Kareen? Among other things, yeah. Sure, we can try and teach you the basics while out and about. Thanks, I'd appreciate it. I even got some wooden knives we can use. Aaron would blow a gasket if he saw us training for real. I'll give you the beginner's course in the meantime. I'd expect nothing less. I have heard you are a decent teacher, after all. Hmm, shut up. Nothing better happened to him, I swear. As I started loading up some spare equipment by the bikes, I let out a nasty yawn. We parked underneath the rock formation shielding the elevator to the underground. Aaron showed me how to use a smaller elevator embedded in the walls for casual trips to the surface. It's right before sunrise, so the desert is still pretty cool. Kareen and Silver are talking about when and where to pick up gas, if he needs to. Aaron and Kanto are drawing a makeshift map guiding us to our destination. I still wish you would have told me about this. I would have come along. It was a spur of the moment thing, babe. Besides, I'm gonna split off before we get there for my own assignment. We haven't really gotten a chance to talk yet. I know. I'm sorry. I've been a little overwhelmed with things lately. Are you two fighting? No. no. Ah. It's been a while, but we can try to plan a group vacation later this year if you want. Oh, oh, I want to go to the beach. Ew, pass. What's wrong with the beach? Sand, water, crabs. Count me out. Wuss. I could go for a swim. Oh, perfect. I have a bathing suit I've been meaning to try out. That didn't take long. It never does. We all chuckle. All right, I think we have pretty much everything we need. We know where to go in an emergency and have enough food for at least two weeks. Silver puts on his hood. Then let's head out while well, it's still cool. Sounds good to me. I'm riding in your sidecar, Aaron. Yep, hopefully it's comfortable enough. Just let me know if you need anything. Wait. We all turn at the sudden call. It's Vita. They're panting by the elevator door. It looks like they ran here. Vita? I'm sorry. I forgot to give you something, Cyrus Cantwell. Vita slowly jogs to catch up to us. It is unbearably cold out here. You... left? Vita holds out a parcel to me before I can continue. Here, some extra serum and a small maintenance kit for while you're gone. Uh, oh, um, thank you, Vita. It's nothing. I also left you some dried tea leaves, something to mix it up while you're on the road. They look around frantically. With a gasp, they stop and look to the right, eyes wide. We all turn to look, and we see what's caught their attention.
the rising sun. Vita's face is the softest that I've ever seen it as they silently admire the sky at its most beautiful. It's been years since I've seen the rising sun. I had almost forgotten how just inspiring it is. Yeah, it is. Kareen places a paw on Vita's shoulder. Do you want to stay up for a little while longer? We can go back down when you're ready. Vita tries to put their serious face back on. Uh, ahem. Uh, yes. Just for a short time. You got it. We'll see you when we get back, all right? I'm sure that you will. Have a good trip, Cyrus Cantwell. I get them a nod before turning towards Aaron and Silver. Ready to get this show on the road? I thought you'd never ask. Aaron chuckles as he leads us over to the bikes. He easily lifts me up and into the sidecar. These are the helmets Kanto made for us. They have a headset inside so that we can talk to each other while we're driving. You're welcome. Kanto shouts from behind us. Aaron yells a thank you over to him. He has a smug smile on his face. I'll drive in the front and let you know if anything suspicious happens. Sounds like a plan. Aaron gets onto the bike and then straps his helmet on, prompting me to do the same. All right, let's move out. Both he and Silver start to rev up their engines. I am now aware of the fact that I've never ridden on a motored bike before, but at the same time, I'm excited. I turn to look back at the crew and wave at them. Before I know it, we start to slowly move forward. We start speeding down the highway, leaving them to shrink over the horizon. Aaron starts speaking to me loud and clear. You doing all right? Oh, yes. I turn my attention towards the rising sun with a smile on my face. Never better. To be continued. Oh. So that was it. Well, that, that was what's available, I mean. But yeah. So... What'd you guys think? I personally thought it was very, very nice. <laughs> um, a lot of, to process, I guess. Well, Vita finally getting out, seeing the sunrise after who knows how long being cooped up, you know, too scared to go out into the world, I guess you could say. Um, basically, this feels like a, like almost at the climax of this arc which it probably is. Uh, and there I am again. Uh, so the next part that we have to look forward to is... Oh, paw print press. What could that be? Um, so the next part that we have to look forward to is when they actually get to Cyrus's um, house. Well, hopefully if they make it, I guess. Um, but yeah. We have that to look forward to now. Ooh, so, yeah. Oh, well, write down in the comments what you thought of this update. I personally liked it very much. I like the whole dynamic that uh, Cyrus and Silver has. That they're they're very, very buddy buddies now. That it isn't sort of like, oh, yeah, he's here and I'm his friend. It's that, you know, they're basically actual friends. Um, and S Silver is here to take care of him. It's kind of also funny that um, Cyrus has a thing for Aaron. It might be because it does remind him of, you know, his dead boyfriend. The guy who's dead. Who isn't coming back. <laughs> um, so, yeah. But I wonder where that leaves Lance. Hmm. <laughs> but yeah. Um, a lot to process, so... You know, write, write it down in the comments and we'll discuss. We'll do the typical discussion stuff in the comments. And yeah. 
So uh, thank you all for watching slash listening. If you would like to play Remember the Flowers yourself, you can find it over on Itch. And uh, there will be a direct link to the Remember the Flowers Twitter page, which will be down in the description, which will you know take you directly to the Itch page. And if you would like to support the project like I do and get early access to the next part, which I already have, he 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 he, <laughs> um, then you'll know you know what happens. So yeah, you know support them. It'll mean a lot to them, and it shows that you actually like the project, and you know stuff like that. You get early access to other little things here and there too. So yeah. Anywho, um, so this will probably be all one video because it it all fits. It it all feels like it fits in one video so yeah and um yeah so i guess that's it and i'll see you guys in the next video bye bye <laughs>